Hello, everyone. Give me a second. Hello, everyone. Hello, people. Are we live already? Yes. We are live already. That is amazing. Yes. Hello, people out there. Um, my name is Arthur Peters, and I'm joined by the beautiful and generous friend Igor Fordik. Hello, Igor. Hello, everyone. And what we're going to do today is to talk a, a little bit about stress at the workplace and stress in personal life. So, yeah, Igor, why are we doing this? Well, I've been working in the corporate environment for over 20 years. And I've gone through multiple stages in my life, being an employee, being a self-employed person. Currently, I'm working as a project manager slash business coach uh, for a company on one project. And due to the understanding that I was exposed to through working with Ankush and with three principles, I was able to actually make my life much easier and I would like to share some of the insights that I got through living my life from this understanding what about you yeah um, I think I started out as a person who well thought I was I was a victim of my circumstances so the best way to live a um, healthy stress-free and fulfilled life would be to Manage my circumstances. And as I got deeper in per into personal development and especially working with anchors and diving deep into the three principles, I got quite different perspective on this. And so, yeah, what I'd really hope that um, a lot of people see this deeper, how our mind, our minds actually work, and so that even more people, um, well, get something out of it, get a little bit less stress, get a little bit more joy in their life, and so yeah, this is why we decided to do this. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to open with a story. Actually, it's relatively recent. Last week we were having a uh, we were having a closing period. And this is usually when the project work is approaching one of the milestones. And there is a lot of work. We have been working from 8 till 10. And I'm not talking about two hours. <laughs> and after three days of, of uh, this intensive work, uh, uh, finally, the the workloads sort of, sort of dropped off and I confirmed with all the stakeholders that we can basically close the shop at 5 p.m. with on-call support and after uh, I confirmed with all, all, all the stakeholders I was very explicit in terms of, of uh, please in case there is anything call me we will support you I just need to know that and I'm driving back home to see my wife, which I did not see for four days. And after 30 minutes of driving, there is a call. Where's the team? I said, okay, I let them go. I confirmed with all the people and in case there would be some, ur some urgency. The, I, I told them to call me. Uh, the person who was calling me was my line manager who basically hired me for, 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 for the job. He's like, it's urgent. And I actually observed within myself the tendency, oh my God, I, already, I did everything I was supposed to do and now they didn't call me and now... However, <laughs> I, got, I got the insight. This is just your thinking, you know? This is a situation. I could label it, why that, why this, or whatnot. And through this understanding that really it's just my thoughts, I was able to calm down and say, okay, let me call my team and I will gather 
people and solve the situation. I returned to the place of well-being. And I dropped a, I dropped a message to a, to a friend of mine. He connected to the call. I connected to the call. And within one hour, within one hour, we were able to resolve it to the thing. The other scenario that is, I assume a lot of people can relate to, could be I would be so pissed at the fact that I did everything and they blame me and oh, it, them they are causing me bad feelings. I would come to the call pissed. I would not be able to listen to the issues and resolve the issue, no? The point is, we all have the answers that are necessary for any situation, provided we can listen to those, provided we return to the asylum. So, yeah, I would like to talk about how to, how to return to the silence. Mm. Yeah, the, that's an amazing story. Thank you for that. Um, Arthur Oyset says, hello, both. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Nice to Nice to have you with us. Hogman, so, oh my God, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, what we're going to say is, people, if you have any uh, sort of questions, feel free to ask them and we'll address them as good as we can. And what I'm really curious about, Igor, mm -hmm. you said you had this moment where you knew you could go off and be angry or be frustrated with the people. Or you could just be present and, well, do the things that are at hand. Yeah. Exactly, you know. Uh, we all have this space within us that provides us the choice to either react to the, to the <clears throat> outside world because it's causing us the stress, because it's causing us being angry or anxious or whatever, or from the peaceful mind, pick the best solution, you know? Uh, uh, even, even in the darkest, in the darkest hour, I always somehow observe myself, observe the, the emotions that are arising and through observation, I'm able to return to it. The question, actually, I had, I had a conversation with, with a friend of mine who is serving a similar, uh, similar role in a different company where he's a delivery manager and he's like, oh my God, these owners of the company, they went to some country in the Middle East and they told me to deliver the, uh, deliver the product that, uh, that was in, in middle of the product life cycle, prepare a demo. I said, that's not possible. And I was so pissed. Fortunately, the programmers were not able to put it together. And the demo was basically failed, meaning the, the demo was blank screen. So they had to talk about it. And he was like, what can I do about that? <sighs> and I told him, yeah. Uh, in the end, it worked out the best could have been because in one day that you were given, you knew that the delivery could not could not happen in sufficient quality. What you did out of your own free will, you created a story about that. Why did they do this to me? Why this happened? And they are assholes. And actually, uh, he went after a week to the owner of a company and shouted on him. Uh, and it brings me, it brings me to, the, uh, to the picture that I, that I used uh, at the last immersion, you know. Uh, in every situation, you are faced with infinite possibilities. By believing that the action is, is providing me some sort of impulse to be angry or impulse to be anxious, I focus my attention to a really small piece of the, of the possibilities, you know? 
And I have always the freedom to calm down and, and pick the best possible outcome. I feel I sort of repeat myself, but I'm trying to talk about something that is very hard for me to put into words. Mm. Have you had any, any similar experience or something that you would like to share with regards to stress at work level? By the way, hi everyone. Hovne, Yami, Thomas. Hello everyone, thank you very much. In case you would have any questions, please feel free and, and raise the question or raise the story and we'll gladly respond to that. Yeah, well, I don't have any recent stories anymore because, well, my stress level are way, way lower than they used to be. And actually, I think the most incredible story that I have is... Um, the, the amount of stress in my everyday life, in my work, in, in social interactions, and in everything I did was so high that at some point after exploring the, the principles and the, the, what you say, the capacity for well-being we have as humans, I had some kind of shift, I had some kind of insight. And suddenly... Not, not suddenly, but over a short amount of time, a lot of stress just fell away. And I think for a day or two, it, I was so shocked because I didn't, it felt like I didn't feel anything. But in fact, just the huge amount of, the huge stress level it dropped. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel so rushed anymore. And so I, I know exactly what you speak of when you say um, there's this space, this capacity in everyone. And I fully agree. And when I started coaching, mm -hmm. and I've been coaching for two years now, I start seeing it in other people as well. How much uh, we, we make up our own problems, how much we have maybe a tiny thing to solve and we get really into this and now we got to solve this and and then we get upset about ourselves why why did i get angry at the first place why did i get depressed in the first place <laughs> i'm into this spiritual uh, journey so long i should know it better <laughs> yeah well yeah it is what it is it grows the pace that it grows and yeah i I would strongly encourage everyone to, to mm -hmm. go the journey, to maybe find something that speaks to them, that mm -hmm. uh, rings true to them, and pursue this. May I ask you a question? Of and course. I, I actually think it's a red herring slash elephant in the room. You said, when I learned about the principles, it helped me to drop off a lot of thinking. Again, I'm paraphrasing. Can you expand a bit yes. on how the principles relate to the stress in the workplace? The principles, to me, they point to how our mind works, how every person's mind work, works. Mm -hmm. And so, in principles language, we feel The, uh, we feel thought taking form in the moment. That's all we feel. In uh, non-principles terms or in different terms, we have this space between impulse and reaction. And to me, every good practice, every good theory, every good concept points towards this space, points towards that there is this possibility to react. And by seeing this, by feeling it, by experiencing it in whatever way, um, I feel it just expanded. Yeah. And so to me, because to me, I know I can think something and then I feel bad afterwards. Like, oh, I don't have enough money. 
בום, מוצ'ו. ביב דאב יאן דאב. Yeah, or God, I got to go to work tomorrow, boom, mood dropped. Yeah. And, yeah. The same goes for, uh, oh, there's a colleague. He said something. Boom, my mood dropped. What do you do about or that? As you, yeah, what do I do about this? Um, in the past, like I said, I tried to manage it. Mm-hmm. I tried to avoid difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. I tried to uh, reduce my workload as much as possible so I don't f- fall into stress, right? Because, well, if one hour, two hours, three hours more work mm-hmm. means, oh, God, I'm going to be so much more stressed, mm-hmm. um, why would I do this? And so seeing this space, seeing this um, ability to react differently, um, like you said, there's so much more possibilities to go forward. Maybe it is the right thing to uh, give yourself a break, go home and sleep a night, sleep a good amount. Yeah. Maybe... It's worthwhile to doing this five, ten extra hours mm-hmm. for a while to get the project finished so I can relax, so uh, the project is done and I can move on. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, Arthur Oyset raised the question, Igor, do you just automatically calm, calm, stress down? Or do you catch yourself doing it and then just let it go? I would like to connect it to what you said, mm-hmm. Arthur, when I asked you about the principles and you said, you know, everyone's world is made out of thoughts. And to answer your question, Arthur, I start to see much more innocence in the people's interaction with me, you know. When my line manager called me and he was evidently stressed, I could see that he saw an email with a red line in it, nobody answering it for 20 minutes. So this is a huge nuclear bomb. In the end, it was not a huge nuclear bomb, but out of the situation that arose for him, it was natural to cause ruckus. So that's one implication of the principles. The other implication of the principles is uh, I much often am able to automatically come down because I catch myself in the misunderstanding. Is it 100%? It's 100% rule? No, it's not. I'm a human. Sometimes I do catch myself. Uh, sometimes I do not catch myself and I'm feeling down. However, on some deeper level, I'm able to recognize the fact that I'm feeling down. What to do about that? Nothing. It's my current state. It will pass. Unless I run with it. Hmm. There was a beautiful distinction when I was listening to one of the videos. And the distinction was, when a thought arises, it arises basically randomly, you know? Before I used, used the uh, metaphor, I had to catch it in order, to, in order to, to bring it to life. And if I do not catch it, it just flies away. The other distinction that rang very true was thought arises and I have the possibility to run with it or to stay here. <laughs> so... Yes, it's much easier. It's much easier for me to calm down and, and stay with the flow. It's not 100%. However... Yeah, that's an amazing... Yeah, go ahead. That's an amazing question uh, because... Well, like I said in the past, I, I used to be stressed out a lot. And then I had to solve my stress, run away from my stress 
which I did in the probably most unhelpful um, with the most unhelpful things. Like I, I surfed YouTube, I watched <laughs> series, I played games. Um, I did a lot to get even more on my mind and not give myself the space to calm down. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I fully agree. Um, it's not 100%. In general, I would say, yes, everything will pass sooner or later. In the workplace, well, I'm in the workplace at work. And what I do, if I notice myself, oh, I'm very upset because of something. I consciously slow myself down. Because I know if from an angry, from a very upset, from a stressed point of view, I'm going to do my work, there'll probably be mistakes and I will spend more time uh, fixing um, the mistakes than slowing down and getting, getting it done step by step a little bit slower, but uh, giving myself the time and the space to, uh, well, to do appropriate work. Let's say not rushed, but not too slow. Actually, nice that you brought up the slow down uh, aspect. During the closing, it's very hectic. And I could see people running around making errors uh, because we, as in the project war room, we are on the different floor. The people who are using our project are on the different floor. And I found myself, you know, going upstairs to the users of the platform. And just by being there, I uh, and observing them they naturally slow down. And as you pointed out, you know, through slowing down that <sighs> through slowing down, you will be able to get to the answer that you're seeking. Yeah. Arthur, Arthur, thank you very much for the question here. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is both mostly on a personal level. You as a project manager, mm -hmm. um, do you do something? Do you help other people to see it? Do, do you help the people in your team to see it? And if so, how? The fact is, it's not about being a project manager or an... Uh, project member or a user or whatever. Uh, I will tell you what I do and I will tell you a story that I was lost and my colleague was able to calm me down. <laughs> so when there is a problem, you know, big problem, nuclear problem, we need to run. I would say, okay, so what is the problem? Just asking the simple questions, you know. Understanding the understanding the situation from the place of calmness provides one million more percent than any amount of bashing and running and screaming in from the place of stress. And yes, as Sanders pointed out, yeah, slowing down <sighs> is breathe out. And actually, I had the situation. It was like two months ago. And uh, I, had a, I had a meeting where we were getting the feedback from the people uh, from the previous quarter and I was like really pissed. <laughs> and I went, I went outside for a smoke uh, with, with a colleague of mine and he was like, Igor, it's not as tragic as you try to <laughs> see that. And actually, the universe through him was able uh, to provide me the space to calm down. 
to breathe out the sun has pointed out. Mm. Breathe in, breathe out. That's, yeah, that's a lovely story. And I fully agree. I sometimes see myself when there's a lot of um, stuff going on, a project has to be finished. Um, people get quite hectic. And I fully agree. I, I'm not a project manager. I'm just an employee. But my co-workers, they are stressed out sometimes. Yeah. So uh, sometimes it's just me being present. And like you said, asking the right questions to help this person out. And I, when you told the story, I remembered the first person to ever influence me in terms of uh, well my perspective on on behavior my perspective on seeing the world and we had this company as a client mm -hmm. and the project manager there was I think he was just slightly above 30 mm -hmm. he was doing his PhD like I said he was project manager mm -hmm. and he was expecting his second child <laughs> and you know, I consider myself a very patient person, mm -hmm. but any time I've been talking to this person and he didn't understand, he, he went like, can you repeat that? I didn't understand. <laughs> any time we went through some data or some uh, chart that uh, I made or my company made, uh -huh. he went like, I don't understand that. Or he saw something and he went like into... A reflective mode for a minute, sometimes two. <laughs> it annoyed me. I can tell you, it annoyed me. But the thing is, after a while, I had an insight. Mm -hmm. Maybe this person is not where he's at because he's stupid, but on the contrary, because he takes the time to slow down and understand everything to a degree that he can move forward effectively. And I was like, wow. And so, yeah, I, I think since then, I allow myself to be stupid. <laughs> yeah. And I allow myself to ask the question if I don't understand something uh, work-wise. Yeah. If a colleague points something out and I'm like, yes, I don't understand. Can you repeat this? <laughs> yeah, it's one of very common corporate illnesses. I cannot admit that I do not know or do not understand. Mm. And the freedom to admit it actually makes it much more efficient. Actually, colleagues make fun of me, you know, because I, on the call, I use the phrase, do I understand it correctly that blah, 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 blah. And they doing, they're doing the counting of how many times I use that. I said, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, to move forward, you got to understand the thing. You got to have the picture. You, you know, got to have the information. Yeah. Good. The 30 minutes passed like nothing. Are there any other points that you want to make? Or, gentlemen, in case you have any further questions or remarks, please feel free to put them in. Perhaps one last thing from me would be, in case you're listening to this and, and, and saying that, yeah, this is too nice to be true, I like to ask you, consider in your work, work life or in, in family life, you know, situations that are similar, however, your emotional, <laughs> I'm, how, how my emotional perception of the situation is completely different. What is the difference? The principle of thought. I'm only able to observe the world through my thoughts. And they change. 
And Stuart, we would be very glad to repeat the session. <laughs> but I would suggest that you rewatch it. It will help you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's words from me. Any comment from you, Alta? Yeah, I'm usually not um, not one to give stuff to do or give good advice, right? And so um, I would say, still, I would say, go out, explore it for yourself. Yeah. If there's anything you take away from this call, you have a situation and you remember, ah, oh, Arthur and Ego, they said, there is a space. <laughs> Ask yourself, is there a space? <laughs> Can I react differently than um, I would react usually? Yeah. Test it out. Exactly. Don't believe us. Exactly. I believe in it. I believe in Igor um, and Sundance. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen thank you very much for your kind support and words of admiration and love <laughs> in case you would like to have a webinar on a particular topic please feel free to either message me or Arthur or drop a comment on the video we'll make this a regular thing in the group and maybe even bigger we're testing it out <laughs> oh yeah so you're saying we're following our own advice yeah yeah <laughs> ah. that's a good idea i think all right gentlemen thank you very it was much. a pleasure bye bye take care